Okay, this video is for a couple of people who have asked me about the um, power supply I built that um, uses AC to run the cell. Um, but first, I just want to uh, give you guys some footage on the liquid variac working. I noticed on the last video I made on that topic, I um, accidentally cut out the main footage of the range the cell can function under, or the um, liquid variac, I mean. Um, Right now, I have the volt meter, or the amp meter, hooked up to the AC side of the Variac. Uh, so we're going to watch what it does as I manipulate it uh, through its courses there so we can see what it does. Then I'm going to hook it up to the DC side and um, run it through its courses there so we can get a better idea of the ranges, you know, how sensitive it is and all that. And another thing I wanted to add, I have copper and solder inside this tube. And there's sodium hydroxide electrolyte, which come to find out is not a very compatible mix at all. I need to switch this out to baking soda in here. Not any current yet, just very little. Not even enough to read. Hopefully you can see that meter there. I'm going to go on ahead and lift this up. This plunger inside this tube, the water's sitting on top of the piston. So what it'll do is lift this column of water up to get on these electrodes. And the more electrode that is exposed to the electrolyte, the more current will pass through. So here we go. I don't know if you can see that meter. Oh, I'm on DC amps. My bad. I'm at 4.5 amps. Now I'm going to go ahead and shut it all the way down again. I'm down to about 1.3 because the very tips are still immersed. I'm going to take it up to halfway. It's about 4.6. Here's full power. 5.3 amps at full power. This is the AC side. Try to get it on halfway there. There's about three. See if I can get it down to two. 2.4, 2.3. You can adjust it pretty much to about whatever amp amperage you want. I really need to shut that down for a second. So that was uh, the liquid variac on the AC side. With zero amps. I'm going to fire up this. This thing does get a little bit warm to the touch. We're at 22 amps. What about 8 amps there with it all the way off, so to say? It doesn't have an off. The electrodes are still slightly in, but there's 9 amps. I would never want to run it that low anyway. There's 46 amps. It's over halfway up. I'm going to go all the way. There's 52 amps. Bring it down, we'll try to get it down to about uh, 15 amps. See if I can do it. Yeah. There's 16. So that's close enough, I guess. <clears throat> so as you can see, this thing is definitely um, pretty versatile as far as range is concerned. It's very similar to a regular rheostat type variac that uses the nicarone wire just like the nicarone wire it's controlling this current by giving off heat another thing about this this also lowers your voltage it doesn't just um, lower the current so um, bear that in mind this lowers the voltage basically what we have here is a microwave transformer and I have taken out the top winding, which is very hard to do, by the way. What you're going to want to do is take some duct tape or some Gorilla Tape and wrap the primary winding and cover it up real good because you're going to need to protect it because you're going to be going through a severely brutal process to get this secondary winding out. Um, what I do is take a hacksaw and cut down one side, cut the wires off completely, and then take a punch and a hammer and set this up on a vise just right so I don't damage the primary 
and then drive that punch through the wire until it presses it all out. That's the fastest and easiest way to do it. And then you just rewind the secondary with some heavy gauge, six gauge wire. So you can use an eight gauge, which is what I had before. Initially, this thing was set up to run at 3.3 volts. But um, for whatever reason, I rewound it because my experiment showed that I wasn't going to be able to use the low voltage. Well, I was completely wrong about that. Um, and then basically what I have here to run the cooling fans is just um, the guts I ripped out of a transformer that's at the voltage I want. It's a 12 volt transformer. I hooked all those cooling fans up. Intuition would lead you to believe that this thing's going to get so hot it's going to catch on fire, the primary that is. Well, that's not the case. This thing doesn't even need this cooling fan. I wasted this fan. It should have been on these diodes. Um, that's the main problem I'm having. Um, as you can see, I have four diodes with three heat sinks. The diodes are connected in parallel. That's what all this is. Well, I don't know enough about electricity to be able to tell you why this head diode's heating up hotter than the other ones, but um, it's definitely an issue. Perhaps the configuration of my wiring is causing um, excessive current flow for that, through that one diode. I'm not sure. I definitely should have used this cooler for these diodes instead of this. But um, it's far better than a car battery arrangement. I've done been down that road. Car batteries uh, can give you some good amp surge, but um, that's not always what I'm using this thing for. This is far better for people who want to build a torch. It allows you to run off the wall current. Um, I can't really think of anything else I could tell you about this. Um, the liquid variac is connected in series with the primary. You have to connect the liquid variac to the AC. As you can see, uh, it's split right there. You might be able to see that. But anyway, this goes to the variac and is connected to the transformer in series with the, the current that comes in. I have a switch. A separate switch for um, the transformer because you're going to want to let these cooling fans run for a while after you shut down to kind of cool you back off because this thing gets so hot you can't touch it. Um, the diodes I got are from Radio Shack. They're not very good for this. They're um, perhaps if I take this wire and move it back here or something that will um, help uh, mitigate the overheating of my lead diode there. By lead diode, I mean it's the one that's closest to the outgoing current. Um, if I'm missing anything that um, you guys needed to know to build yourself one of these, uh, let me know. Like I said, uh, this thing does not get hot. Um, I've ran, ran it extensively, and it doesn't even get warm, which is um, pretty amazing. Uh, I recommend that when you get this, uh, this heavy gauge wire here is like... Um, it's not speaker wire, which I regret, because it's not as flexible. You want to get speaker wire because it's so flexible, it winds in there real nicely. This right here was a nightmare. This stuff's as stiff as wood. So uh, definitely go with the, the six gauge speaker wire on that. Or, like I said, I had this wound with eight gauge doing 3.3 volts at 550 amps. Right now it's running at 7.2 volts at about, uh, I think it was 350 amps, this unit right here. But um, the liquid variac lowers that voltage down to about 4.2. So there you have it. There's the liquid variac power controller and the uh, microwave transformer DC unit. Definitely something you want to look into if you're experimenting or if you want to build a torch. This was all this stuff you see here is fairly cheap. Um, a lot of it's just junk that I already had. I got three private junkyards, four closets, and one pissed off girlfriend. So I forgot to mention that I ran a test, an amperage test on those diodes that may have slightly fried them, and that may be why that one's heating up. And secondly, that lead diode I'm talking about is thinner than the rest of them. And, um, also, the thing runs fine. You just can't run it over three minutes or four minutes, I think, was the most I've ever ran it. Anything after that, it just gets way too hot. So it does work. It's just you can't 